So in the last two episodes, we created an add-on, in this case, the Blink add-on, and then we published it so that we could use it in different apps on different computers. But it does have some weaknesses. One of those is that it's automatically a header one. So if we want to make it something like a paragraph tag, it won't necessarily work right out of the box. It'll turn into a header one. We have to do something like this. That's okay for sometimes, but what if we want to have all of our blink tags as paragraph tags? Or if we want to extend the tag in a more comprehensive way, something that can't just be fed in in the handlebars. Luckily, there's a well-understood pattern for making this work. And to understand it, you have to understand the difference between the app and the add-on folders. So currently, our component is in the app folder, app slash component slash blink tag. And so what that means is it gets mixed in automatically to the application's namespace. That's why we can just use blink tag. But there's also an add-on folder, which is part of the add-ons namespace. And the add-ons namespace is great because it can be imported and extended anywhere in both the add-on and the app that the add-on is being used in. So let's go ahead and we'll go to our blink tag and we'll take this and we'll change it to be in the add-ons folder. So now we've got our blink tag in our add-on folder, but this will create a disruption. So if we restart our Ember app and remember that this app is still NPM linked and so we don't need to re-download anything. So we start it and we reload and it's giving us an error because the blink tag helper couldn't be found because it's just in the add-ons namespace. And there are two ways that we could deal with this. One is we could create a component here called blink tag.js and we'll import from blink tag components blink tag and that'll be the blink tag component. And then we'll just export that. And that will give us back our blink tag. But we don't want everyone to have to create their own blink tag component file in order to import our stuff. We want it to be able to be available by default if that's what people want. So here's how you do it. First, we're gonna cut this and remove the blink tag component file. And then I'll show you that yes, if you reload this now, it now errors. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here and we're going to go into the apps folder again and we're going to create a blink tag component. But now instead of defining everything on the blink tag component, we'll just import it from the add-ons folder and then export it as is. And then when we restart our project, we'll see that it's working again. So now that we've replicated the old functionality, let's go ahead and use this new power that we've created. So we'll go to our components and we'll create a blink tag and we'll extend the blink tag that we have from our add-on. And then we'll just make the tag name null. And this indeed copies over. So in order to make this look good, we'll go ahead and add an H1 back here. And we'll go ahead and remove this tag name. So now it's looking like it should. We could even wrap everything in a blink tag because now that we're not having a tag associated with it, it'll just provide the blink functionality. But let's not get caught up in the rather silly example. The point that we're making is that now that we have it in the add-ons folder, so add-on slash component slash blink tag, we can extend it both 
in the host application that has the add-on within it. Or if we don't want to do that, if we just want the default, then we can extend it in app slash component slash blink tag. And that will have the default available with no work by the user. So I hope this is useful to you. And even though this is one of the most common patterns within Ember CLI for making an extensible add-on, there are plenty of other things that you can do to make your add-on a better experience for other users. And we may go over those in future episodes. I'll see you then.